And if you stopped people on the street here and asked who was William Rockhill Nelson and what did he do, you would be likely to get blank stares. His fame has receded. Yet, I think Nelson deserves better from history. In his day, he ran the only major metropolitan newspaper in the United States that was committed to economic and political reform in a serious way, in any sense of those terms as we understand them. Nelson's editorial page spoke out for such measures as the initiative and the referendum, uh, public ownership of municipal utilities, and more intensive national regulation of corporations. So in a survey of major newspapers made in 1909, the Kansas City Star was rated more in favor of reform than all the other major metropolitan newspapers in the United States combined. As Nelson himself told an interviewer in 1910, I don't want the Star's editorials to be a lot of literary essays. I want to get things done. Now, Nelson came out of a reform tradition linked to the Democratic Party. He was born in 1841. He, he launched the Star in 1880 at the age of 39. And by 1905, he had built a newspaper into one of the major regional voices uh, in the country, uh, dominating the, sou the Southwest and the Middle West against other newspapers. A large man who tipped the scales at 230 pounds, Twinkling Bill, as he was known by some newspaper reporters, was also known as Colonel Nelson. He had no military record whatever, but as the Kansas editor William Allen White put it, he looked Coloniferous. <laughs> Nelson had come out of the Democratic Party in the Middle West. He was a campaign manager for Samuel J. Tilden in 1876 in Indiana, and he, he gloried in his direct, forceful personality. I've tried at times to be gentle and diplomatic, he once commented, but I've never done well in my stocking feet. This similarity to the aggressive personal style of Theodore Roosevelt was one of the things that held the two men together when they began to cooperate in the early 20th century.